Hi everybody, it's Peter Nolan from New Age Sharpening in Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada. And uh, the purpose of this video is uh, it's my attempt to really get uh, novice sharpeners, folks who just want to start learning how to sharpen a knife, understand that your first goal, your first priority should be to establish the fundamentals of knife sharpening. So that means don't worry now, right now about things you're going to hear and see on the internet about micro bevels and asymmetric edges and whether a toothy edge is versus a polished edge and edge retention. Don't worry about those things yet. And I know that you've also, a lot of you have watched my uh, four levels of pressure video, which is great. I, I really appreciate that. I think it's important that you try that down the line a little bit. But even then, just get, don't worry about it now. Don't let it cloud your, uh, your confidence. I want, I want you to become used to using and sharpening with uh, two levels of pressure, basically. So a moderate level to form a burr, then you're going to lighten up a bit to remove the burr. So I want you to understand that your knives are going to get sharp when you achieve muscle memory. And you achieve muscle memory by getting at it and going to work. So and get, stop watching the videos and you're just going to have fun here with this uh, knife and water stone. So, for this video, I've got a Shapton glass, 500 water stone, but I recommend you start about the 1000 grit level if you're just starting. That's a perfect stone to start sharpening knives at. Don't be afraid of the coarse water stones. I love them. I could not do my business or I could not imagine not having coarse water stones. But again, if you just learn, just pick up a 1000 grit water stone and go from there. So, angles. Okay, what angle do you sharpen at? Almost almost all knives in the world are sharp between 15, 19, 20 degrees per side. Okay, up around this area. You know it's not up here and it's not down there, so it's up around here. This is a Takamura, a Japanese knife. And it would be a shame to sharpen it at 20 degrees. So I'm going to sharpen this at about 12 degrees to achieve the optimum performance that this knife has to offer. So that what that's what you need to know for now about angles. If you've picked up a handmade Japanese knife, a Fujiwara or a Masakage or something like that, you don't you know that you want to sharpen it like the master sharpener be, who gave it to you did it at about 12 11 degrees so which is much more acute so we're down down in this area so so that's all you need to know about angles for now you need to be able to hold it and it, uh, try to hold that and it's not going to be possible you know it's going to be tricky at first because you're just learning you got to you have no muscle memory yet but believe me you're not going to believe how quickly you can do that and how good you can get at holding an angle. Now, okay, here we go. This is how, these are Peter Nowlin's fundamentals, my fundamentals. I was taught uh, how to sharpen by nobody really at first and I ran into a, ha a master sharpener once, some Japanese gentleman who didn't speak English, but he didn't speak Japanese. I mean, I didn't speak Japanese, but you know, sharpeners, we all speak the same language. It was the most incredible lesson I've ever learned from a man, and uh, and I'm going to share with you some of the knowledge. So, okay, here we go. I start at the right side of the knife, okay? This being the right side of the knife, I start at the tip, and I start at the bottom of my water stone, okay? The side and closest to me, and I use edge trailing strokes. So, which means, okay? Once I've chosen my angle, I start the tip. So okay, for the tip, folks, it's a tricky area. All you need to do, and all now you're going to read other things, but what I do is raise the elbow. Okay, if you want a nice sharp tip, I raise my elbow so it's parallel to the ground as I'm doing the tip area. So this, the tip area, okay, this area in here. So now all, all knives don't have tips, so if you're sharpening an Akiri or something like that that doesn't have a tip, then you don't need to worry about this. But when you're sharpening a knife with a tip, you want to do this, otherwise the bevel is going to creep up into this front part of the knife here. Okay, so simple, simply just raise, I raise my elbow. Now, I'm going to apply pressure as I'm pushing the knife away from me. Okay, so pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on, pressure off. So it's like this. But I'm not actually lifting the knife from the stone. So there's no pressure on my downward pull. As I pull the knife towards me, there is no pressure. But there is pressure being applied with these two fingers, which is where the sharpening is taking place underneath here. These two fingers are doing the work. 
My other hand is just holding the knife stable, and that's what you, you will connect. There's no distractions, there's no music in the background. I'm not thinking about how much, if I need to change the oil in my car, I'm not thinking about anything but this, my pressure, angles, water stone, water, and how to do this properly, and muscle memory. This is my goal. So, pressure, no pressure. Pressure, now I start moving my fingers down, this, down the knife, because I want to sharpen the entire blade. So my, my finger, my pressure fingers, are right in the perimeter of the knife. The edge is close to the edge as possible because that's where I want the sharpening to take place. And now as I get to the heel area, I always go a little perpendicular here, and then I go back down, then I adjust the knife again. Focusing on holding that 12 degree angle, it's tricky. So, how long do I do this? I do this until the abrasive powers of this water stone have forced the fatigued metal on this side of the knife to move over to the other side of the knife, okay? So, and I know I've done that by forming a burr, and the burr is composed of the fatigued metal that flips over this side, and I can feel it. So I can feel by holding with my thumb down here, I can feel the rough spot, okay? So I've succeeded in my, prime, my first goal, forming a burr on one side of the knife. So, what happens if you don't form a burr all the way along the knife? Say if it's not, let's just say there's no burr here, but I've got one there and one here. That means my work isn't done yet. So, I continue on the same side of the knife, applying the same, now, however, I don't use as much pressure on the areas where the burr is formed. I don't need to. So, hardly any pressure here, hardly any pressure. Now, when I get to the area that there's no burr, I apply the same amount of pressure I did initially. Pressure, pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. So I continue to do that, pressure, pressure, no pressure. I continue to do that until that I've got the whole burr formed. So I've got the burr formed on both sides of the knife. That's a signal for me to switch sides. If it takes you a long time to form a burr, it just doesn't seem to be happening, flip the knife over and do it on the other side anyway without forming the burr. You have to form a burr on both sides of the knife. That's the bottom line. But don't grind away on one side of the knife for, for an eternity because your goal is to do whatever you do on one side of the knife, you want to do on the other. So you don't have to count. You can. I, I don't count. I find that it tends to automate a process. It shouldn't be automated. But if you, you do whatever you need to do to, to try to duplicate your efforts on both sides of the knife. Okay, that leads to bevel consistency, okay? So, I've formed my burr. I'm good to go. I pat myself in the back. Now I'm going to do the other side of the knife. I start at the heel. I put the knife parallel to the, uh, sorry, uh, perpendicular to stone. I find my angle of 12 degrees for this knife. I'm applying pressure with this, and I start, I start at the top of the stone. I'm doing the other side of the knife. I'm applying pressure with this finger, and these two fingers, and I'm going to want to make sure I get that entire heel area, okay? Very important to get that and not miss any spots. So, pressure, no pressure. Pressure, no pressure. I'm using the entire length of the stone, and I'm always, my fingers are always on the stone. I'm not over here pressing, I'm here on the stone, okay? So now that I've done that heel, I start moving to this area. Pressure, no pressure. Pressure, no pressure. Pressure, no pressure. Pip, so elbow up. Elbow down. Pressure, no pressure. Now I do this until I form a burr. So always check your work, see how you're going. Monitor your work. Okay, I've got a burr formed on the entire edge of the knife this time. Okay, so now that's another signal for me to pat myself on the back because I've just formed the burr on both sides of the knife and now I'm going to remove it. It's all about burr formation, then burr removal. I never, need, I never want to form a burr again on this knife. I want to remove it. I want to clean the edge. So again, but it's the same thing. How do you get rid of that burr? The same water stone, same process, same angle but I've reduced my pressure by about 50%. Just a little bit of pressure here. I'm, I'm 
elbow up as I'm doing the tip, pressure on, pressure off. Light pressure on, light pressure off. Light pressure on, light pressure off. Just a beautiful movement of light pressure. Stone is going to clean that fatigue metal away, the burr. Stuff is trying to hang on to the mothership. Flip the knife. Light pressure, no pressure. Light pressure, no pressure. Elbow up because I'm at the tip. Now, I've done that on both sides. Again, just a couple light passes. As light as you can hold that knife. As, as long as you're keeping it stable. So now, what do you do? You want to make sure that fur is gone. You can feel it. The knife, there's nothing there. But the, here's a really good, cool little thing that you can do. And, I, and this isn't something I invented. I've, I've learned this is just like from like uh, from lots of people smarter than I am. So I always hold the edge of the knife underneath a good light. And then what I'm looking for is any hints of a glint of metal. And you'll see what I mean. And once you do this, if you see anything reflecting, I just had a guy in here last night, an executive chef, who was learning how to sharpen uh, the finer arts of sharpening. And we went through this process and he was immediately could see any spots that we missed. Because uh, it's what it is, it's metal that's still there, folded over, still reflecting off the light. So all you do, if, that, if you do see something, I can't see anything here, but if you do, you just go back to that little area with a little bit of pressure and just go like that. Go that a few times, do like that, and then look at it. That little motion, that little extra time spent on that edge is going to do wonders. Okay, so now that those are my fundamentals. Okay, forming a burr on both sides of the knife and removing the burr and a Getting, building muscle memory by holding that uh, edge at the appropriate uh, angle, the knife, I'm sorry, the spine of the knife off the water stone at the appropriate angle for this particular knife. Okay? Get that down. Get your technique down. Get your technique, find one, and own it. Whether it's mine or someone else's, that's fine, you, you, but it's got to be yours at the end of the day. So don't get confused by everyone talking about you need micro bubbles, you need this. You can't. Um, a tooth edge lasts longer than a polish edge, and none of that's not that does, not even true all the time. So don't worry about that. Worry about this. Get your first knife sharp, and then get it sharper ten more times, and then you can start manipulating pressure and getting the most you can out of every stone. Okay. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye bye.